y'all tonight? What? 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 But well, it's gonna be alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah. me and my clique, we don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck. Trick daddy. I'm David Dodick. I'm a professor of neurology at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona and director of the Mayo Clinic Concussion Program. Concussion, as many of you know, is a major public health concern and a major scientific and clinical priority in the United States right now. Concussion affects upwards, sport-related concussion affects upwards of 3.8 million athletes per year, and youth, adolescent, amateur, and professional athletes are all at risk for concussion. As many of you know, there are at least now 39 states that have passed concussion legislation. And the concussion legislation specifically centers around, amongst other things, the need for the athlete to be cleared by a licensed health care provider before being allowed to return to play. NFL faced an existential problem. Concussions could literally end the game. And the reason why this is such a big win for the National Football League, in my opinion, is that even though, including the attorney's fees, it's going to cost every NFL team, every NFL owner, about $30 million. This is $30 million payable over a 20-year period. The owners are going to have to pay basically about $12 million over the first three years per team to fund this uh, uh, concussion fund settlement. So what are the consequences of premature return to play? We know that if an athlete returns to play prematurely, he or she is at risk of one of three things essentially. One, they're at risk of a rare but obviously serious and potentially fatal complication known as second impact syndrome which when an athlete's brain has not recovered from a prior concussion, incurring a second concussion may lead to fatal brain swelling. The second issue is that they are at an increased risk for a second concussion which takes them longer to recover from and has the potential to lead to a post-concussion syndrome, which are symptoms that may be disabling that persists for weeks, months, or years. And third, they are at risk for a subsequent concussion, which can lead to progressive neurodegenerative changes in the brain that have been identified in athletes as young as teenagers, 17, 18 years of age. When he was 13, Zachary Lystead of Maple Valley, Washington, near Seattle, loved to play football as much as his dad, Victor, Loved watching him play. Oh man, dude, he was awesome. Zach never shied away from going after the ball carrier when he was on defense. In October of 2006, Zach hit his head hard while making this tackle. There was an injury timeout, but just minutes later, Zach returned to the game. Had he stopped after his first hit, and walked away, we'd have a different story to tell today. We need to be sure that the athlete's brain is back to normal before they return to play, not when the athlete feels that he or she is back to normal. So who should be evaluating these athletes? I think the individual who is evaluating these athletes should be someone experienced in the evaluation of patients with brain injury, because a concussion is indeed a brain injury. That may or may not be a neurologist, but it should be someone who is experienced in the evaluation of concussion. Why is that important? Because he or she, whoever is evaluating these athletes, are not only experienced in evaluating concussion, but know how to examine the brain to ensure that both the metabolic and structural integrity of the brain is back to its baseline before returning that athlete to return to play. 
That's important because symptoms by and large resolve within several days, whereas more objective measures of brain function we know don't return to normal until about seven days in older athletes and even longer in youth athletes. As we get more sophisticated with the diagnostic testing, for example, there are certain sophisticated imaging procedures that we can do that show that even though objective measures have returned to baseline within a week or two, sometimes the brain metabolism and the structural integrity of the brain has not recovered from a concussion maybe up to four, six weeks or even longer. So whoever evaluates these athletes needs to be sure that there's some objective measure of brain function so that we know when the athlete's brain has truly returned to baseline so that we can be sure that these athletes are returning to play when it's safe.